and today we are going to talk about the design and build of this awesome Red Bull Soapbox race car's frame. Now, if you don't know what Red Bull Soapbox is, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a downhill soapbox race that Red Bull sponsors, but it is a lot more exciting because creativity and originality means a lot more than speed. So you see some really cool cars are doing a lot of really cool stuff. So let's go have some fun talking about the design and build of this guy. Now I started the design process in this program you see here and really the main thing I cared about was this frame and what I needed to do was make sure that that frame was going to survive some of the ramps you see in Soapbox. Which leads me to this simulation right here which is called an event simulation. Now if I animate this you'll see that what I have done is actually simulate this thing falling from about 24 inches or 2 feet high to get a feel for what that impact is going to do because in the first soapbox I tried uh, we actually had a catastrophic failure on a ramp and I don't want that to happen again so you can see that while there are some high stresses on the wheels those are pneumatic and I won't have any problems on this weldment as long as I weld the frame up well. And now here's a quick preview of just how wonderfully well I have welded this frame up. And you can see that this thing's cobbled together from a few different things. Uh, if you couldn't guess by the fact that some things are painted, some things aren't, and most things are hacked to pieces. Well, that's because I started with this horrible donor car, which is just an adult pedal cart. Now, it only powers one wheel, so when I try and go uphill, I spin around or I totally flip the thing because the center gravity is so far back. So, needless to say, I was thrilled to hack this thing to pieces so that I could cannibalize it for a much better cause. Obviously, that cause is Red Bull Soapbox. Uh, the next step was to go get a bunch of steel from a local steel supplier, which you see me unloading right here, because we're going to go ahead and cut this to shape for the very specific dimensions of the frame so we can start welding everything together. Now I do need to point out I use the absolutely cheapest equipment that Harbor Freight has to offer to weld and manufacture this frame, so I'm going to blame it on that if anything goes wrong. And it undoubtedly will, but it was a fun process so you can see here I'm just just putting things together and trying to make it all stick and as soon as I could get started I made a mistake I welded the axle for the wheels together wrong so I had to get to work with this grinder trying to cut it right back in half and finally I had something presentable that I could put the finishing touches on which you see here now I should point out I'm an absolutely horrible welder look at how disgusting <laughs> these welds look so while this car has some parts designed to fail the wheel is not made to fall off if that happens that was totally unintentional and here's again the finished product in all her beauty sort of a Frankenstein of a car but hopefully we can wrap a shell around this so you don't see just how hideous these welds and some of the work on this thing is Finally, it was time to test, and because I was worried about getting hurt, I went ahead and let my, my son do this because uh, he'll recover quicker, right? I'm just kidding. Uh, really, he just wanted to mash the horn down before we got started. I actually started out on my driveway with some really poorly construed agility tests around these cones. Uh, everything seemed to work okay. It wasn't terribly high speed, so I really didn't expect to learn too much, but I at least got the point that hey I can steer and I can control this thing pretty well. Which meant I was ready to move on to bigger and better things so I set up the sweet ramp and you can see that I made a high speed jump off of it and nothing failed yet. And finally we had the long test where I am going down a much longer slope and trying to hit more than the two miles an hour I've hit in my driveway and I definitely succeeded at that but not by much. Uh, I only got up to about 12 miles an hour in this test, but one thing I noticed, and you'll see it here in a second, as soon as I hit about 11 miles an hour, I get the speed wobbles, which should make the race even better. Hopefully it's uh, controllable in the 20 plus mile per hour range, which I think it will be. All right, and that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, or if you wanna reach out before the race and maybe uh, talk some trash, have at it. We'll see you at the race.